Hello and welcome to season five. We're here at the end of it for the last of the season. These are the last 10 episodes and we're starting with Kill Switch, episode 11, written by William Gibson and Tom Maddox, directed by Rob Bowman. 90s tech wizards, we got a dude named Gelman who helped Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, etc. That's according to the lone gunman here. Shit, this one's about AI. Not relevant at all. Esther, aka Invisigoth, tells the agents about a virus that got loose on the net. Remember the net? And has a conscience. This is clearly science fiction still. Right, Scully? Breaking bad inspiration? Just when I was waiting for something interesting to happen. The system has him now. Time for the girls to come to his rescue. Hurry, ladies. He's in a VR nightmare. Watch out for Wally or Johnny Five there. Kill switch time. Bye, Esther. We hardly knew you. AI will live through you now. A good episode exploring the dangers of AI, which is not something we're currently dealing with or anything. Let's move on to Bad Blood, episode 12. <laughs> Written by the good old Vince Gilligan. Directed by Cliff Bowl, who's returning. Mulder the Vampire Slayer? Not quite. We're already off to a fun start in this VG up. We get to see Scully's perspective of past events and how she views her partner, Bun. This is the device they're using to provide exposition. Look, Luke Wilson is here. He flirts with our girl as Fox watches. This is a proper vampire app that will help to erase three from my memory. <laughs> Lots of fun moments with Scully and the morgue. Then she saves Mulder from the not-vampire pizza guy. Time for Mulder's version of the story. I love the back and forth of what happened between the agents before writing the report. Gives us insight into their working relationship a little more. Of course their stories differ, and that leads to some hilarity. Another RV, this time in a BG ep. Hmm. Mulder's right again. Plot twist! <laughs> that was a hilarious episode. I love the vampire lore, and the Mulder Scully moments were great too. Bravo, Vince. Hit it out of the park again. Patient X, episode 13. Chris Carter and Frank Spotnitz wrote it. Kim Manners directs. Oh, great. Blondie from the Evil UN is here. And Crycheck, too. Even better. Could they just fuck off together? Mulder the Skeptic is spreading misinformation. He really is jaded, but he'll figure it all out soon. Back into Nguska with our fave villain. He's his own boss now. Patient X or Cassandra meets with Mulder. She's an alien abductee who brings up Dwayne Barry. Remember him? He won't go back. Yet. The fucks in charge meet up and gives us some exposition about a boy witnessing a mass murder in Kazakhstan. Then we get a call from Krychek who offers up the boy. Scully marvels at Mulder's skepticism, but then she finds out Cassandra and her were abducted in the same place. They have a heart-to-heart -heart about their experiences. The aliens aren't bad, according to Cassandra. Really keeping the stuntmen busy this season. The fucks in charge are not happy about this. They took my advice. We end on a UFO sighting, and it's fiery aftermath. And it was a good episode, but a little slow for me. A lot happened, but it didn't feel as important as it should have. On to the second of this two-parter, The Red and the Black, episode 14. Written by Chris Carter and Frank Spotnitz, directed by Chris Carter. Why does she keep having to get hurt to send a message? Blondie got hurt too, but I don't really care about her. Mulder still loves Scully. The boy was killed after Crycheck and Blondie were found out. Scully is as done with Mulder's skepticism as I am. We don't know if the vaccine works. Hmm, never heard that before. She finally remembers the UFO fire in the last episode, another hand-holding moment. What is it, Dana? It's, uh, they're back. Who? Oh, no, they're, they're on fire. Oh, God. They're setting them on fire. I can't. Who? Who's doing this? Their faces, I can't. They have no faces. I, they have no eyes. Oh, God, they're coming at us. surrounding us. They won't stop. They won't stop. There's, there's another one. There's another 
ship. Even Skinner doesn't understand. Mulder skepticism. Shit. The vaccine has no effect. You don't say. This dude needs to mind his own business. Cry check to the rescue. Time to put Mulder skepticism to bed. Cue the clip. I'm not here to kill you, Mulder. I'm here to help you. Hey, thanks. You know, if it wasn't in my best interest, I would just as soon squeeze this trigger. What's stopping you? Hear this, Agent Mulder. Listen very carefully, because what I'm telling you is deadly serious. There is a war raging. And unless you pull your head out of the sand, you and I and about five billion other people are going to go the way of the dinosaur. I'm talking planned invasion. The colonization of this planet by an extraterrestrial race. <laughs> I thought you were serious. Kazakhstan, Skyland Mountain, the site in Pennsylvania, they're all alien lighthouses where the colonization will begin. But where now a battle is being waged, a struggle for heaven and earth, where there was one law, fight or die and one rule resist or serve serve who not who what Krychek you're a murderer a liar and a coward just because you stick a gun in my chest I'm supposed to believe you're my friend Get up. I was sent by a man. A man who knows as I do. The resistance is in our grasp. And in yours. The mass incinerations were strikes by an alien rebellion. Upset plans for occupation. No one of these rebels is being held captive. And if he dies, so does the resistance. The truth is out there, and they will find it. And he's alive! Big episode, better than part one for me. Now we have Mulder back, and we can move on to a bigger and brighter future. And we move on to episode 15, Travelers, written by John Scheiben and Frank Spotnitz, directed by William A. Graham. Back to the past, we're in 1990. Younger Mulder is back, and he's got a personal X-File to solve. Someone said his dad's name before he died. Nice specs, Fox. He speaks with an FBI agent named Arthur Dales, who regales him with a McCarthy-era story. And look, Roy Cohn is here. He hates communists. Hey, Bill. Good to see you again. Looks a little like Nick Kroll from this angle, but whatever. He knows about the conspiracy and warns Dales. That's disgusting. Bye-bye, Dales' partner. In the end, this episode solidified two things for me. That Bill Mulder got in too deep in his government role, and that in a different way, Vox Mulder is bound to do the same. Not a lot else was learned. Moving on to episode 16, Mind's Eye. Written by Tim Minear, directed by Kim Manners. Scully returns. I missed her. She and Mulder are investigating a blind chick's murders. Mulder doesn't believe she's guilty. Scully isn't so sure. Let's see who's right. He is, of course. She sees through the killer's eyes and finds their victims afterwards. Mulder figures it out and Scully congratulates him. PCR test confirms she's not guilty and the killer is her father. She did this one. This was an interesting standalone episode with a stellar performance by Lily Taylor as 
Marty. It's a shame she threw her life away to get back at her father for his crimes, but it had to be fucked up to see him do the things he did, so it's kind of understandable. Episode 17, All Souls, story by Billy Brown and Dan Angel, teleplay by Frank Spotnitz and John Scheiben, and directed by Alan Coulter. Scully struggles with Emily's death. She confesses her guilt, clinging to her faith, which leads to her learning of a special case. She focuses on it with help from her lovely partner, who never is too busy for her. Is it now? Mulder and Scully have switched roles again. She thinks it could be a supernatural death, and he thinks religion is bullshit. Meanwhile, she's haunted by her own guilt over Emily's death. This ginger can't be trusted. This one can, but she's going through some stuff. This was a slow and impactful episode that has biblical elements I couldn't relate to, but I appreciate the performances and conflict between our fave agents. I'm glad Dana got closure as well. Episode 18, The Pine Bluff Variant. Big episode. Written by John Scheiben, directed by Rob Bowman. We start with the FBI in hot pursuit of a suspect Mulder loses. He uses a bioweapon to kill a guy. Hmm, genetic engineering again. Scully follows Mulder and finds out he's undercover with the terrorist Haley. It's not going well, but Mulder doesn't get made. Another sweet moment as she tends to his hand. The U.S. government is still making bioweapons. You don't say! Being undercover sucks. They use Mulder and Scully's piss. Don't fuck with her partner. Intense episode with high stakes and the bioweapon storyline is a bit relevant now. Does Ukraine have chemical or biological weapons? Uh, Ukraine has uh, biological research facilities, which, in fact, we are now quite concerned Russian troops, Russian forces may be seeking to uh, gain control of. So we are working with the Ukrainians on how they can prevent any of those research materials from falling into the hands of uh, Russian forces should they approach. I I'm sure you're aware that the Russian propaganda t groups are already putting out there all kinds of information about how they've uncovered a plot by the Ukrainians to release biological weapons in the country and with NATO's coordination. If there's a biological or chemical weapon incident or, uh, or attack inside of Ukraine, is there any doubt in your mind that 100 percent it would be the Russians that would be behind it? There is no doubt in my mind, Senator, and it is classic Russian uh, technique to blame on the other guy what they're planning to do themselves. Episode 19, Folie Adieu, written by Vince Gilligan, directed by Kim Manners. I've done this, but the fundraising kind. It was not fun. Time to deal with some monsters in Chicago. Mulder is thrilled. I like the continuity with his fingers, by the way. Scully helps to change his mind. Gary is a disgruntled employee, but he's seeing his boss as a monster. He doesn't handle it well. Mindless drones. He wants to take away who we are, he says. About his boss. That's a call center job in a nutshell. Yep. The moral of this app is work as hell. Gary was right, but it doesn't matter. Fully adieu. Mulder says it's not that. He saw the creature. Scully should know by now to trust him. Skinner, too. Aw, believe him, Scully. You're my one in five billion, says Mulder. Stop it. That was a pretty intense Vince ep. We got some paranoid but right Mulder and a lot of gaslighting. But all's well that ends well. On to episode 20. The end. Written by Chris Carter. Directed by R.W. Goodwin. We got the finale. Nice. Looks like we're getting more CSM. Crycheck has to bring him back. Monotone fucking charge asks, can we count on you? And CSM replies, yes. This kid knows Mulder. <laughs> He's a chess master who can read minds. Not Scully consulting with the lone gunman about Mulder's ex. Speaking of bitch, she just talked shit about our girl. Mulder says he's okay without her. Haha. <laughs> I forgot her name, by the way. The jealousy continues. CSM tries to recruit Agent Spender, but Mulder's onto him. Meanwhile, at the FBI... The tests revealed something peculiar in an area of the brain that we are only beginning to understand an area of the temporal lobe that neurophysicists are calling the God module. I hope I'm not going to hear that this kid is the next Christ child. 
All of the boy's brain processes are showing extraordinary activity in exactly this part of the brain, which is not just abnormal or anomalous, but from what I know, absolutely unheard of. There are corollaries. Individuals who've been responsible for great leaps forward in understanding in science, Newton, Galileo, Einstein, Stephen Hawking, all these men exhibited modes of thinking that are suggestive of access to special brain centers. All right, so this kid is a human oddity. Would somebody please tell me why anyone would go to such great lengths as to kill him? This kid may be the key, not just to all human potential, but to all spiritual, unexplained, paranormal phenomena. The key to everything in the X-Files. Let me get this right. We're supposed to believe that this boy was going to be killed because of the X-Files? No, it's bigger than that. Uh-huh. Explain it to me. To us. I can't. But the shooter can. The assassin that you have locked up. In exchange for immunity from prosecution. You want to give a murderer a free ride for the secrets to the pyramids? This is crazy. It's nuts. You mischaracterize what I've said. This would be quantifiable scientific proof of everything that Agent Mulder and I have investigated over the past five years. How do you quantify the spiritual? It can't be done. Now you ask for immunity for a killer on that basis, the Attorney General's gonna go off. You're allowed to investigate the X-Files as an indulgence, but draw the wrong kind of attention and they'll close you down. Put an end to all your work, something I happen to have an interest in myself. Let's everyone step out in the hall. All right. Agent Mulder, you stay put. She's right, you know the risk you're taking, the long-term plans that you and I talked about. If what Agent Scully's found is true, and I have every reason to believe that it is, then the answers I might have spent a lifetime searching for may fall together like a million puzzle pieces. You'd risk the X-Files. How soon can you call the Attorney General? He's in bad hands now. And we end season five with the knowledge that the X-Files is being closed down again. CSM says he's Spender's father. Sure. And this happens. So a lot of great stuff. Let's get into the top five episodes. I actually have them pick, picked out beforehand this time so I don't have to edit a whole bunch of shit. All right, number five is Emily. A very impactful and important episode focusing on Scully and it was done very well. I really enjoyed it. Bad Blood, number four. Just because, you know, Vince is at it again. We got this crazy vampire storyline. It is just fun as hell. I love the comedy. It's amazing. Number three, The Red and the Black. Another great second part to a two-parter. I don't know why I always go for the second part more than the first part. It just always seems that way. It's weird. But I really love this episode. I love the grandness of it and the conspiracy stuff and the alien stuff. It's always, the X-Files is best when it's talking about aliens, let's be honest. And talking about the experiences people have as an abductee, you know, it's interesting to look at. And then we have the Pine Bluff variant number two. Just because it's very real world and a little scary to watch now. Um, Bioweapons, big deal. Um, viruses, big deal. Uh, flesh-eating viruses like this one, very big deal. Very good acting, very good directing. Just a really all-around good episode. But not as good as my number one pick, which happens to be Redux 2. Another second part to a two-parter. This was a big episode that changed the trajectory of the series in a lot of ways. It was a really interesting entry. I really enjoyed it. And uh, thank you so much for watching and 
I hope I see you in the next one, which is going to be a super awkward fun review of the movie, The X-Files, Fight the Future. Please join me. Bye-bye now. See you then.